What's going on guys, unknown player here and today once again we will be going over a bunch of the latest Destiny 2 news that I found from all over the internet, pointing out some cool things that you may have missed and discussing my thoughts on them and as usual we've got a lot to go over. So firstly I want to talk about the actual launch times of Destiny 2 which has been a growing topic recently and pretty controversial too because both Bungie and Activision confirm that Destiny 2 will have a rolling launch. This means when your time zone hits midnight so it becomes the 6th of September the game will be available. There's also conflict in countdown timers and retailers saying that it might not be exactly midnight and also people saying that physical discs may be able to get on earlier than digital copies which have to wait until midnight. So generally quite a lot of confusion to things we still don't have concrete answers to which is something I hope they talk about soon. Now the reason this is possibly controversial and does have potential for some issues is because if the servers do come online per time zone, obviously that means people in the west coast of America will be among the last to play Destiny 2. So people in Australia will be able to play 17 hours before the entire west coast of America like LA, San Francisco, Seattle. And the extreme example is that New Zealand is 22 hours ahead of Hawaii. So this could cause some problems, especially for the raid. Luke Smith suggested that Destiny 2's raid is going to launch a couple days after the game itself launches. So if that's still the plan, then earlier time zones are going to have like 10 to 20 hours more time to repair and level up and be more powerful. So maybe you'll see a lot of the world's first raid completions from Australia, New Zealand. I know a lot of hardcore people always want to try and go for world's first, so this might make things a little bit unfair. Now the story in itself is also another problem because this isn't Destiny 1. This story is going to take a good day or maybe even two of serious speed running and try and get through the 80 missions and 50 cutscenes. That's only when the end game begins. Then you have to do a bunch of grinding and trying to get your level up. But regardless of the raid or trying to be first for everything, it will be a bit strange for just generally Twitter, YouTube, Reddit. It's going to be filled with spoilers. People are going to be tweeting out, this is how the story ends and this is what third subclasses are and these are all the secrets. So if you're someone who is on the internet a lot, probably like most of us watching this video, it will be a bit messy and you may have to just leave the internet the entire day until it goes to midnight in your area. So like I said, all official sources from Bungie and Activision did say this is how the launch is going to work. But I do wonder if they're going to delay the raid to give everyone enough time. But hopefully they come on and clarify soon how exactly the timing is going to go down. So next up, let's talk about something pretty strange, which is hard to know what's going on. But this is an image appearing to show gold exotic weapons inside Destiny 2. Now, this was something a lot of you guys told me about in the comment section of my videos and a couple of people telling me on Twitter. But this is an official press image. It's not photoshopped by some fan and even Bungie tweeted out this exact image. And people were replying to that saying the weapons do look gold. But if you compare the sweet business on the left over there to the one on the right, they do look definitely pretty different. You can see what looks like a gold exotic. We do know for a fact that gold weapon shaders are a thing in Destiny 2 for certain. In a recent trailer, I pointed out that gold, chrome and even carbon fiber shaders are going to be in Destiny 2 and you can see them on weapons and armor as well. But those are for legendaries and in the beta it wasn't possible to put shaders on exotics. You never have been able to customize exotics even in Destiny 1. So it does make me kind of doubt you can do this in Destiny 2. But maybe it's a lighting thing. It's just really strange how only the exotics in the hands do look really gold. Especially the Risk Runner being held by the Warlock. But it's not their armor or anything else. It's just the weapons that look really gold for some reason. So I'm pretty torn on this. Basic logic does say that you'll never be able to customize exotics with shaders. But this image definitely does look like it. So let me know what you think down below in the comments. I thought it was pretty strange. So next up, I want to talk about a couple interesting story aspects, mainly how we might get our new subclasses and also what Gaul is up to with the speaker. I won't be dropping any spoilers, just connecting dots of things we already know and pointing out some things you may have missed with my own theories. So after the first mission, when Gaul kicks you off the ship, we know that you have to stumble all the way to the European dead zone and meet Hawthorne on the farm who tells you about the Shard of the Traveller. Now, according to the recent Edge article, right after you go to the giant shard of the Traveler when Hawthorne sends you, they said you're soon running around with your new sets of powers. So clearly you get your light and some subclasses back once you go to that shard of the Traveler. Now, one of my personal theories is that these shards might have something to do with that. We've gotten very quick glimpses at these things, which we know are shards of the Traveler inside the European Dead Zone. More specifically, they're right next to where the shard is inside the forest where it's corrupting its light. But seeing as this is an even smaller shard of the bigger shard of the Traveler, it would make sense that this is where we get new subclasses from. So maybe the Sentinel subclass is obtained from this Void one, the Dawnblade from a Solar Shard somewhere else, and the Arc Shrider the same way. But the fact that Hawthorne tells us to go here to get our subclasses and powers and light back makes me think that these glowing elemental shards may be something to do with that process. 
So we know that Gaul is also up to something with that same shard in the European dead zone. This is a 4K image of their base, which if you notice is a huge thing pointing at the shard. But Edge recently revealed that the Red Legion actually kidnapped the speaker, which we already knew he was gone, but we didn't know exactly if he died or escaped on his own will or went somewhere. But now we know the Cabal actually have the speaker and most likely want to get some knowledge out of him to learn how the Traveler works and how Gaul can carry out his big master plan of taking the light. But another very popular theory that I've seen for Speaker is, of course, that he may be helping Ghoul or the Speaker may be actually console. I've probably seen that speculated like a thousand times by now. But I kind of hope something like that does actually happen because I want to see some kind of betrayal and plot twist in the sequel because Destiny characters have been very predictable. So I'm not sure if Bungie would go as far as making the Speaker a villain. But the IMDB page for Destiny 2 was recently updated and the trivia says the Speaker will play a very large role in the game. So if that is true and he really is a major character, then maybe we'll have some big plot twists with him. So there was also another major fake rumor that was shut down, which was that Destiny 1 might be coming to PC through Steam. Now, this was because the Steam library showed Destiny 1 Silver available for purchase on Steam. For some reason, people actually bought this. I have no idea why, but people actually bought microtransactions for a game that doesn't exist. But some people thought this would mean Destiny 1 would come to Steam. And surprisingly, a lot of major gaming articles actually cover this like fact, like it would definitely happen. But of course, this isn't the case. And yet again, Deej came in to clarify that it is false. So Destiny 1 is not coming to PC. Anyone who bought the silver on Steam will be refunded, luckily for them. And then it also reminded everyone that Destiny 2 is going to be on Battle.net with Blizzard, so it wouldn't make sense anyway for a Destiny game to be listed on Steam in the first place. So like I always say, Bungie and Activision will always shut down rumors that aren't true, and they'll normally ignore ones that have an element of truth to them, so it's a good rule of thumb to avoid fake rumors and possibly tell ones that are real. So we also recently got a look at some new content to expect inside the PC beta through this trailer. Didn't really show anything new that we hadn't seen before, but it's a cool look at the Javelin 4 map, what it looks like, and also the new Raze Lighter type sword, which we've seen a couple times, but it's hard to tell if this is legendary or exotic. Now, the strange thing is that this is supposed to be a trailer representing and showing off the PC beta, but it shows all new weapons and armor. Now, I don't think this is actually what's going to be inside the beta because Bungie didn't say that they would add new weapons, mainly because you've got new armor, you've got weapon shaders, you've got dead orbit guns, and even possibly that exotic sword. So I doubt they would put all this much stuff inside the PC beta on top of the new map and the sandbox update, but we'll have to see. Now, something I thought was more interesting was the actual map itself, Javelin 4, because this is set on Io, the moon of Jupiter, of course. Now, Rasputin has a base here, which is really odd, but as you can see by the images, that is obviously Rasputin's logo, and this is a Warmind bunker or base. Now, I'm sure we'll find out why in the story or maybe the Rasputin DLC, but normally you'll find each planet has its own Warmind, like Rasputin is on Earth, Charlemagne is on Mars, but I guess Rasputin is also here, or was here until the area was abandoned, but I'm interested to know why Rasputin has a base on Io. So there you have it, a bunch of the latest news and interesting topics recently crammed into one video. As always, if you enjoyed it, a like rating would be much appreciated. Subscribe for a bunch more Destiny 2 videos right here on the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.